Welcome to this Ask the Experts. I'm joined by Harsha Chintalapani, co-founder and CTO of Colate and co-creator of Open Metadata. How are you doing today, Harsha? Great, John. Thanks for having me. You bet. I thought we could spend a little time letting people get to know you and how you came to develop Open Metadata, kind of where this whole roller coaster started. Yep. Yeah, so I've been working in the data infrastructure space for about two decades right now. Uh, my journey started in big data. I initially, I started work, working at Yahoo in vertical search engines. Part of that job is to index large amounts of data. And when MapEd just came in, there is entire Yahoo team started building Hadoop. And we are the customers of Hadoop internally at Yahoo. So I get to know about Hadoop and get to use Hadoop in, in a long way. Uh, post yeah. that, you know, for over the years, I've been you know, we're in different hands in open source communities. I've been a committer and PMT member of Apache Kafka, Apache Storm, Hadoop, Hive, and so many other projects. So I always love working on these foundational data technologies and collaborating with the community to push them forward. So what kind of led to the creation of open metadata then? What tro problem were you running into that you were trying to solve? Uh, Yahoo and Mozilla, I went to Hortonworks where I met my co-founder Suresh. Suresh was the core engineer behind Hadoop back in the Yahoo days, and they came out and started the company. He's co-founder of Harmworks as well. So I get to uh, work with Suresh very closely at Harmworks, you know, becoming a committer and PMC in many of these projects. Throughout the journey, the common thread uh, has, there is a common thread that be passion for improving how people use data. Whether it was building, you know, massive storages with Hadoop, or uh, making real-time pipelines with streaming technologies such as Apache Storm and Apache Kafka. Mm -hmm. The major goal for me is to make data reliable and usable for the end user. So the idea for open data really came from, you know, pains we experienced over and over in large data platforms, right? Okay. One major platform across any organization, uh, be it at Yahoo, be it at Hortonworks, where we kind of enable data for many large organizations. Mm -hmm. Basically at Uber, we noticed the data is always fragmented into different team silos. Not only the data and the metadata itself is fragmented, but also the tooling that enables users is also fragmented. For example, data governance people have catalogs, their engineers have observability and data quality, and lineage is, is a common thread that runs across into different platforms. So we see this problem play in and out many times. In big organizations, right, you end up managing different systems for their own piece of metadata. So you have teams and silos, they own their data, they can manage their own metadata as well. So you yeah. might have one tool for data catalog, another for quality, another for lineage, and so on. So you found that this caused a lot of friction and wasted effort. The metadata are often inconsistent and siloed. For example, in a definition of column and the owner of a data set might be recorded in three different places because you have catalog, you have quality, you have lineage and other tools, and they're, they're always not in sync. And at Uber, where we had tons of, or if not millions of data assets and a growing number of data tools, this becomes a serious challenge. It was hard for people to discover the right data, plus its quality, even know who to ask for it, right? So we usually famously have unlist joining and they have to kind of jump from one Slack channel to another Slack channel to get to know who owns this data and ask these questions. Sometimes call this as like a fractured data, right? When your metadata is incomplete or spread out, it really obscures the holistic picture of the data itself. So you got a huge so organization like that, right? And everybody, I mean, you're huge. You know, you, you can't have like 300 yeah. people, you know, in a meeting talking and trying to coordinate. So clearly there's a challenge. And, and it, it can never bring 300 people into one single meeting either, right? So it's always like, hey, you know, I used to own this data. Now I moved to another team. I don't know who owns this data, right? Yeah. And I want to get permissions as an analyst to read and build my dashboard. And I have to kind of jump through hoops to even figure out who owns this data. Mm -hmm. And now next set of the problems happens. Once you know who owns the data, hey, can I add this column? Can you describe me this column details? It's always like one-to-one. -one. It becomes a tribal knowledge. Yeah. It never recorded. And this use case repeats on and on, right? Every time new person joins, they need this data. They go through the singular motion and stuff. Hey, come into one single place, trying to discover the data. So yeah, big problem. <laughs> Elegant solution. Um, so we've seen some big announcements now with AI and MCP uh, just this week with uh, open metadata. How are you seeing that impact or maybe some of the future and how that can relate? 
So AI is obviously having a huge impact on how we think about our, our platform capabilities, how we do our workflows on a day to day. And metadata is where the golden nuggets of the information that yes. we store. Like it has the context, it has who has access. All we are enabling today through the people, we can enable through the power of metadata the AI as well. Traditionally, you had to know, you know, especially in catalogs or these world traditional catalogs, you had to know who you are looking for in the catalog and manually check lineage class. But now you can imagine having a conversational interface, something like we already shipped in open metadata through our MCP server or not. Right. So you can have a conversation through MCP, through our AI LLM models with the rich context of unified metadata graph that we built and have this conversation stuff going and looking into these different interfaces. So how we consume, how, how we operate the data is com completely getting revolutionary as, as we speak. And open metadata is this uh, central nervous system that enables your LLM models to kind of power and answer the questions that the user's having. Right? That's a really strong enablement technology. I mean, being able to sort of converse with, you know, to get an answer is just so much easier than, you know, searching down, trying to hunt down, you know, naming conventions or what have you especially in a large organization where you have all these different assets. That's really exciting. I, I know what I saw recently was really cool. So any any final thoughts, inspirations, prognostication? Yeah, so what I like to emphasize in closing is that the metadata management, when you say that, it sounds like a little bit nerdy, behind the scenes topic, you know, uh, but has a huge impact on organizational ability to, to be a data-driven, right? So to be a data-driven is not just... We are connecting petabytes of data or terabytes or whatnot. All of these platforms enable us to do it. But what impact you are driving to the business? What goals are you achieving? Mm -hmm. Right? Uh, that is where we call a data culture. When people can easily find the data they need, understand the context, plus this accuracy, then they make better decisions. Then they can drive your business forward with the data that we are yeah. enabling. My vision is that, you know, metadata becomes the first class citizens in every data stack. And that's what open metadata is enabling. I think we will see open metadata evolve into central nervous system of data ecosystem, connecting, orchestrating all the tools and data assets. And this is where the power of AI and automation will come into play. More collaboration between technical and business users, and ultimately more insight and value from the data with less effort. That's our vision, that's our goal uh, from open metadata. Very exciting. Well, thank you so much, Harsha, for taking some time out and sharing your background and some of that vision with me. Thanks, Sean.